I'm glad that we've got, hallelujah. I'm glad we've got enough for the devil to fight us, aren't you? Too many miles, honey. Too many trials are through. Help me remember there's too much to gain, to lose. Keep your hand up to God. I've crossed that hot burning desert. Many times I struggle. Watch the right road. know what I'm singing about. Somewhere up ahead, there's cool, sparkling, clear water, and if it is one word, God's people don't you. Your hands to God. Too many rivers, my feet walk through. Lord, there's too many treasures that are waiting over yonder. Praise God, and there's too much to gain. If you have your Bible, how many have your Bible? How many's got a Bible with you? My God, maybe I ought to take a text on carrying your Bible. 
this I hold in my hand is the most precious thing in my life today. It's the answer to my problems. It really is. You know, I don't think one day, one day we may, we may desire to have a Bible. That's right. You're watching the program. One day we may desire to sit down somewhere and take an hour to read God's Word. In certain parts of the world today, certain parts of the world, if they catch you with the Bible, they'll kill you or put your eyes out. Certain parts of the communist world, if they catch you teaching your children about Jesus, they'll, they'll pierce their ears inside with sharp obstacles so they can't hear anymore. Or pull their tongue out and cut it off and let them drown their own blood. That's sad. That's pitiful. But America, America's got to turn back to God. I said America's got to turn back to God. Hallelujah. I got a vision. I got a vision. I've got a real vision. God has given me a vision. I, I want to build schools. And I want to build orphanages. An old age home where people can, can find freedom and liberty in God. And children can find food for their hungry bellies. And clothes for their naked backs across the, the waters. And I, I've got a vision. I want to build Christian schools right here in America. And I know it's good to go to the mission fields. And I'm going to the mission fields. And we're doing some mission work now. Not to any extent what we're going to do. But I, I want you to know America is becoming the evangelistic field. We've got so many people that don't know the true Jesus that I'm preaching. Hallelujah. But he's real. Say amen to somebody. That's right. And I believe before we can have revival most of the time, and this is this is this will hold true all across America. We're going to have to get prayer back in our schools. And we're going to have to start teaching our children how to worship God and, and, and fear God and love God all at the same time. Say amen, somebody. And teach them that there is a divine source of power and authority and that it doesn't come from Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny. It comes from Jesus Christ who is God Almighty. If you love him, give him a great big hand clap. Give Jesus a great big cheer. If you have your Bible, 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians. 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Here's what the Bible said, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. I like that. God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted. Above that ye are able. But will with the temptation. Make also make a way. To escape. That ye may be able to. To bear it. If I title this message, I would simply call it, There is a way to escape. We're living in a modern society today where teenagers are on drugs and alcohol and searching in the bottom of the a bottle and, and in the needle and in the pill to try to find peace and joy and happiness they're bogged down with so many pressures and demon powers of darkness and, and, and oppressive spirits upon their mind to bog them down to the place that they, they have to resort to something to try to hide the real convictions and the real feelings of their heart and their soul they run to the junkie on the street and they try to get their veins full of drugs to try to forget about their problems, trying to find an escape way, trying to find a way out of their problems. And we don't have enough Holy Ghost filled preachers uh, that'll stand and tell the truth uh, that the answer's not in a pill or a needle or a bottle of whiskey or booze, uh, but the answer is in Jesus Christ uh, of Nazareth, King of Kings uh, and Lord of Lords. Uh, he is our escape way. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. If you believe it, give Jesus a hand clap to not give the Lord a great big cheer. Amen. He helped me out of my problems. 
I was looking for a door out of trouble. I was looking for an escape way. I was looking for somebody to help me through my problems and my troubles. I couldn't find it at public works. I couldn't find it in playing cards. I couldn't find it in, in, in drinking and cussing and smoking. I couldn't find it in dipping. I couldn't find it in the world of things, ladies and gentlemen. But when I went down that aisle, glory to God, and fell on my knees in that old-fashioned altar in the hills of West Virginia, God changed my life, and God gave me an escape way. Glory to God, he gave me a way out of my troubles. If you're watching this program today, and you're life is a mess and you're on drugs and alcohol and you can't get loose let me tell you where your escape way is your escape way is going to be there when you bow your knees and say Jesus I need you in my life I've got to have you in my heart come on somebody give Jesus a great big hand clap give the Lord a great big cheer God will make you an escape way. Yeah. I'm not just preaching to, to lost men and women tonight and on this program to you that are watching anywhere that you might be watching the program. I'm not just preaching to those that are lost. I'm preaching to church members that have been going to church for 20 years, but yet they've lost their joy. They've lost their peace. They've lost their shout. They don't have a song to sing anymore, and they sit on a pew somewhere and never praise God and never worship God, and they've not felt God in a year or two and don't know what it is to get your hands up and praise God. I'm telling you, there's an escape way for you. The devil says, you know, don't have God. The devil says God don't love you. But the Bible said God will not let you be tempted greater than what you can stand. But will with the temptation make you a way to escape. You tell that devil that's bogging you down, church member. You tell that devil, get off and leave me alone. But greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. If you believe it, give Jesus a hand clap. Give the Lord a great big cheer tonight. God said, I'll make you an escape way. God said, I'll help you escape. Isn't that what it's all about? Isn't that what it's all about? You, sir, watching the program, you guzzle whiskey like it's water. You come staggered in and you hit the old lady over the head. You jump on the children, you think you've done something. You've not escaped. You've just got tied up worse. Say amen, somebody. But there is an escape way for you. God said, I'll make you an escape way. I'll make you a way to escape. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And when you come right down to it, ladies and gentlemen, when you come right down to it, salvation, another word for salvation is escaping. What's God saying when he, when he sends the repentance message? What's God saying when the blood of Calvary is preached? What's God saying when a man stands up and preaches till his clothes are wet with sweat and eyes red where he's cried and wept before God for your souls? What's it mean when he, he presents an escape way for you? I'll tell you what it means. It means God's going to destroy the world one day. It means that Peter prophesied, said, I saw the elements melt with a fervent heat. What's that mean, preacher? Honey, the Bible said heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. God said, I'll make you an escape way. Honey, let me tell you, there's going to be hell poured out upon this world, but you that are washed in the blood of the Lamb. You that are set free by the power of God, nothing will hurt you. A thousand will fall on one side, ten thousand on another side. It won't come nigh your dwelling. If your name's in the book of life, you've got power with God. I believe Jesus is getting ready to come to sweep his bride out of this world over the threshold of glory. Are you ready to go? I've got my escape clothes on. I've got the wedding garment on. Come on again. Give Jesus a, a great big cheer to the Lord a hand tonight. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about hell vomiting up the dead. 
I'm talking about the time God said hell is going to give up the dead. I'm talking about when the ocean, the seas boil like a tea cu- a teapot or a tea kettle. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the time the sun's going to turn black as sackcloth and the moon is blood. And the very stars that you stand outside and look up into the heaven and gaze at are going to fall from the heavens to the earth. I'm talking about people that's going to beg for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them and hide them from his face. I'm talking about sores, running sores that's going to be upon people's bodies. I'm talking about a, I'm talking about flesh that's going to consume in the, uh, and their eyes consume in their sockets and their tongue will cleave to the roof of their mouth. I'm talking about if you don't know Jesus, you're not going to escape what's coming upon the world. But if you're washed in the blood that Emmanuel shed on Mount Calvary, there's not a devil in hell jumping, crawling, flying, or walking. Got power to take your name out of the book of life. Come on, somebody and say amen. Honey, I'm proud. Why do you shout the way you do, Brother West? Why do you praise God? Why do you get so emotional? I'll tell you why. Because somewhere in a place called heaven, there is a book, praise God, that's a special book. It's never been touched by the hands of the devil. The, the powers of sin have never touched it. Somewhere on the cover of that book is written something probably like this. This is the book of life. All the names in this book are going to live as long as God lives. Why are you happy, preacher? Because I have escaped the damnation of hell and I found the door and Jesus said I am the door of the sheep pool. come on children and give the master a hand clap give Jesus a great big cheer it'll take me a while to preach this series on television and I'm going to preach, I pray, I preach hell so hot, your seat will get hot sir sissy I hope that you can't sit still I preach it so hot Jesus is coming a lot of stations say, I don't want that kind of preaching on our station. That's too old-fashioned. That's just too old John the Baptist-style preaching. Honey, let me tell you something. God chose the foolishness of preaching. He didn't, he didn't choose speaking. He chose preaching. Say amen, somebody. I believe it's time to get fire back in the pulpit, and then you'll get fire in the pew. Say amen, somebody. But as long as you got a six-foot icicle standing in the pulpit, you're not going to have nothing but ice cubes in the pew. It's time for you to find out, have I got enough to escape what's coming upon the world. Jesus said, I'll make you an escape way. He will be your way, your truth, and your life. Say amen, somebody. Let me tell you about one, hallelujah, that loves you, that said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I'm with you all the way, even to the end of the world. Somebody somewhere loves you. And he made a way to escape for you. We live in a world where temptations are on every hand. Some of you that are here tonight in the Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, you fought powers of hell. You fought powers against your mind. You've wrestled against suicide. And you've fought powers of of. of of, of lying spirits and every kind of an old evil spirit that could even be imagined has come against some of you that are trying to live right for God. A lot of you that are watching this program have been going to church for years, but now you're in a place where it seems like you fight constantly for your sanity and seem like the pressures of life are, are just bogging you down and it feels like uh, the heavens are brass and it, and it feels like you can't touch God and, and, and you get down on your knees in about five minutes seem like it's all over for you and, and, and seem like God just don't hear your prayers anymore and the devil's constantly sitting on your shoulders whispering in your ear and saying God don't love you God don't care for you but I'm here to tell you that if you're born again if you're filled with the 
spirit of Jesus Christ. It's the same spirit that raised him from the dead. There is no power in hell that can take you out of God's book. If your name's in the book of life, you've got a right to leap for joy. You've got a right to praise God. You've got a right to dance in the spirit. You've got a right to talk in tongues. You've got a right to be used of God. If you're filled with that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, you're a child of the king. And I'd rather be a child of the king than the devil's puppet on a string. I'd rather belong to Jesus than to belong to this world. I'd rather be a Christian and not have a dime in my pocket than to be a millionaire and turn my back on God and lose what I've got. I've got something in my soul that money can't buy. What is it, preacher? It's peace and joy and it's happiness. I can smile when hell's a bust and lose. I can praise God when everything's going wrong because there's somebody that lives inside of me that said, I'll be with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Lo, I'm with you all the way, even to the end of the world. I'll be with you when you're sick. I'll be with you when you're well. I'll be with you when you're down. I'll be with you when you're up. I'll be with you when you've got buddies. I'll be with you when you don't have any buddies. I'll be with you when it's daylight. I'll be with you when it's dark. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Lo, I'm with you all the way, even to the end of the world, Jesus said. Isn't that what you're looking for? Go ahead and give him a hand clap. Isn't that what you're looking for? God said, I'll make you a way to escape. I'll make you an escape way. Look, it's coming. There's coming a judgment, a great white throne judgment. But you can escape. Run to the open arms of Jesus. Pour your heart out to him. Tell him all your troubles. He's ready to help you. He's ready to let you cry on his shoulders. Oh, I feel his presence. Glory to God. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. Some of you that are possibly hearing my voice, watching the program, are here tonight in the auditorium. You've not seen the sun shine for days. Some of you have been engulfed in dark clouds of despair and defeat for years and years. You sit around sometimes and tears roll down your cheeks when you think of how things used to be. When you think of how the preacher used to preach and you'd sit there with a smile on your face and tears rolling down your cheeks all at the same time, so full of joy that you didn't know what to do with it, just bubbling over with the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. But now there's, there's an all-out war against the true preachers of the gospel. Anybody, and I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, my people hear my voice, I promise you that if you live godly you'll suffer persecution in this world but through it all God said he'd make an escape way with every temptation that comes you can have joy through it for the Bible said count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation instead of getting an old long sour mule looking face and when all the powers of hell are coming against you instead of sitting down and feeling sorry for yourself praise God if you'll turn it around and turn over a new leaf as the old saying goes you can start leaping for joy and when the devil crawls on your shoulder and says what are you jumping for you can say because I've got joy in the Lord my name is written in the book of life hallelujah a lot of you that are listening a lot of you that are here tonight you might say, Brother West, I don't see how that you can talk so much about joy. You just don't know how bad my problems are. You just don't know how things have been with me. You just don't know what a great battle I've been fighting. You don't know, Brother West, you just don't know. Well, maybe I don't know all about your battle, but I'll guarantee you that you've not hardly been down a road that I've not already been down or, or, or somewhere or another I went through something similar to it. And I'm here to tell you a living witness that if you'll hold your head up high and throw Throw your shoulders back and put your nose right up against the devil's nose and say, look here, somebody's going to have to move. Somebody's going to have to budge, and it's not going to be me because I'm a child of the king, and the victory is mine. My God, give Jesus a hand clap. Give Jesus a great big cheer all over this building tonight. 
Hallelujah. You say, Brother West, I, I, I don't know why you want to talk so much about joy. I don't know why you want to talk about being happy so much. I don't get to pray for the sick, and nobody gets healed when I pray for the sick. And I have, I, I've never prophesied, and I, I, I'm not a deacon, or I, I, I'm not a preacher. Why, why do I have to, uh, why, why should I be happy? I didn't get to go to school to learn how to preach or be a deacon or run the church. You don't need to learn how to run the church. Let God run the church. Say amen, somebody. But Brother West, I, I never get to go visit the hospitals, and I never get to preach on the streets, and I never get to, to do all of that, and I, I, I just ain't got nothing to be happy about. Well, that's the biggest lie the devil's ever told you. Huh? <laughs> the apostles came back to Jesus there one day and said, just a smiling and laughing and having a big time. They said, Lord, devils come out in your name when we speak your name. Devils come out. The sick gets healed in your name. And they were just a rejoicing, just a having a time. Jesus looked at them and said, Rejoice not that devils are subject to you in my name. Are you listening? Are you listening? But he said something, a powerful statement that makes devils run over top of themselves, getting out of your way if you'll use it. If you ain't got nothing to be happy about, if the finance company is coming, the representative's coming up the, the walk to take your car away, if the phone company's calling and saying, we're going to take your phone out, if the electric company says, we're going to turn your electricity off, and all hells are breaking loose and everything's going wrong. You can still have joy and you can still have peace. You can, es uh, you can escape to the peace and the joy of God because of one thing. Your name is written in the book of life. Jesus said, rejoice not that devils are subject to you in my name. Glory to God. But he said, rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That's enough to make a Baptist want to shout. That's enough to make a Methodist leap for joy. That's enough to make a church of God hug a Jesus name's neck and say, I love you. That's enough to, to cause a Presbyterian to shake hands with a Catholic and say, let's go to heaven together. Say amen, somebody. That's enough to cause anybody to want to worship God in the spirit and in the truth. If you believe it, give Jesus a great big hand clap tonight. God said, I'll make you an escape way. Listen. Listen to this aspect of the message. The Bible said, how shall we escape? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Do you know what's wrong with the church today across America? Do you know why the sick are not being healed and the lost are not being saved like they should be? I know that to some degree and some measure people are being converted and saved and some are being healed. But we should have mass healings. We should have mass salvation. All the calls are old-fashioned. Uh, Tarian, sir, whatever you want to call it. We should, we should have mass conversions. One word. One word. Neglect. God never did quit healing. It was the church that neglected that part of the word. God never did quit deliverance. The deliverance power of God is still in the spirit. And the spirit is still in the church. 
and the church has still got the power of God. We're not a puny church, and we're not a we're not a weak church. Glory to God, and we're not a, a church that is empty, but we're a church that's powerful. God's church has power. God's church has authority. God's church has ability. God's church has knowledge. Hallelujah! It may not be man-made knowledge and man-obtained knowledge, but it's knowledge of God. And they that do know their God shall do exploits. Honey, I want you to know God wants to give you power. God wants to give you the spirit. God wants to give you an escape way. But if you neglect God's plan, if you neglect the blood of Jesus, you'll never be saved. If you neglect him bleeding and dying on that cross, you'll never be saved. If you neglect him standing at the whipping post and them beating his back to the flesh was torn like ribbons from his back. If you neglect that, you may never get healed. But if you'll pay attention to it and stand up upon the word of God and say I believe it if all hell breaks loose I still believe it then God said I'll make you an escape way I'll help you to escape come on somebody give the Lord a hand clap give Jesus a great big cheer God said it R.A. West didn't say it God said it but you've got to take God's escape way You've got to take God's escape way. I preached the other night. What's wrong with the joy of the Lord? What's wrong with having joy in God? What's wrong with the joy of the Lord? We don't have to. If you're a Christian, you don't have to go out here in the world of things to get joy. I don't even want that stuff. I'm like one preacher said one time. I didn't agree with him when I first heard him start saying it. But after I heard him through, I agreed with him. He said, I cuss all I want to cuss. I drink all the liquor I want to drink. He said, I just don't want to drink it no more. And I just don't want to cuss no more. Because when Jesus moves in, that old want to moves out. <laughs> Say amen, somebody. And God makes you an escape way. God makes you a way to escape. Listen to me. Every one of you that are here tonight, you that are watching that are Christians, God has helped you to escape everything that's in this world. God has, his, has made an escape way. God's made a door out of trouble and hardship, and poverty. In the plan of God, God has made provision for everything that you'll ever need. God has made provision for healing for your body that's sick. I take him up on that provision just every now and then. God's made a provision in the word that he'll put food on your table, clothes on your children's back, all you got to do is believe him and trust him. My God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that God's made every provision in the word to keep you comfortable, to take care of you, to clothe you, to feed you, to put shelter over your head, an automobile to drive to church and to the job, sir. God has done that. If you have a penny, sane or sinner, Anybody here on the sound of my voice, if you have a penny to your name, God gave it to you. God allowed you to have it. It was God that did it. Glory to God, and he did it for his glory because he loves you. And he lets it rain on the unjust as well as the just. He clothes the lilies of the field so beautiful with little petals and flowers and leaves. And he feeds the sparrow that don't know how to plant or sow or reap. How much more does he care for you that are not ashamed of his name, that love his great eternal Holy Spirit? Glory to God. How much more will he do for you if when all the powers of the enemy are coming against you, you'll lift up your hands and praise him and say, I'll make it. Praise God because he is with me. How many know what I'm talking about? If you do, raise your hands and praise God for his power. Slip your hands up and worship the Lord. God said, I'll make you an escape way. Temptations come. Whether you understand this or not, whether you believe it or not, temptations come. I've heard people say, I, I don't get tempted anymore. I don't ever have a thought in my mind anymore that's, that's bad. I don't even face things that way anymore. Well, I'll have to say this, that they, they must be a whole lot better than I am. They must be ready to be raptured or something. 
Because if you live godly, you'll suffer persecution. And the devil's going to be there. The Bible said, oh, let me tell you what one of the greatest apostles that ever lived said. When I go to do good, evil is present. Say amen, somebody. And, and let's not forget that we're still in the flesh. Let us not forget that we are still flesh. That we have not been changed as Paul spoke. We shall all be changed. Our body, this body that I'm living in, this temple that's speaking now, this, these lips that are talking, this tongue that's speaking now is not eternal. But there's something being conformed to the image of God's Son inside of me that'll be like him fashioned like under his glorious body hallelujah that's the escape way god said i'll make your way to escape say amen somebody god will make a way to escape you might as well get used to it you are going to have temptations as long as you live i know that many times temptations come when we're drawn aside of our own lust. But God said he would not allow you to be drawn aside or tempted greater than what you can bear. And he's faithful. He will help you. He will be there. He'll make you an escape way. Say amen, somebody. He'll make you a way to escape everything that Satan tries to tangle you up in. I know some of you are back in a spiritual corner somewhere. You've got your back to the wall. There's nowhere to go. The devil's pounding you over the head and telling you that there's no hope for you. Why don't you just take your name off the book? Why don't you just throw the towel in, so to speak? Why don't you just throw your hands up and quit? But you can't do that. Yesterday you were a loser, but after today you're going to be a winner yesterday you were sick but after today you're going to be healed because you're going to take the escape way and you're going to run to jesus and the bible teaches that the name of the lord is a strong tower that the righteous run into and are safe yesterday you were down but today you're up yesterday you were in the background but today you're in the forefront because you're coming out of those spiritual corners you're coming out in the name of jesus Jesus, you're going to kick devils right and left. The devil said you don't have it, but you're going to go on and swing the sword of the Spirit and the shield of faith, and you're going to have power to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the powers of the enemy. If you believe it, give the Lord a hand clap, everybody. Give Jesus a great big cheer. Oh, hallelujah. God said, I'll make your way to escape you got to want to escape look when this world's reeling and rocking when men are crawling like serpents on their bellies in the flames of the lake of fire you'll be glad that you escaped it'll be worth every tear that you've cried it'll be worth every day that you ever fasted It'll be worth every time you ever opened that Bible and read for two or three hours. It'll be worth every time that you awoke in the middle of the night and something impressed you to go pray. It'll be worth it when others were sleeping. God had you praying. It'll be worth it when you see what you escape. As sure as you're here tonight, as sure as you're watching this program, there's a place called hell. But I want you to know that hell is not the last place that a man or woman is going. God said that even hell will give up the dead and hell itself will be cast into the lake of fire. Somewhere God's got a lake of fire dammed up. Somewhere there's a lake of something probably like a, a molten liquid type fire that's waiting for every person that neglects the plan of God. If you go to hell, sir, if you are lost, sissy, it's nobody's fault but your own. You can blame God. You can look up and curse God. You can do anything you want to. You can blame your husband. You can blame your wife. You can blame your mother-in-law, your dad-in-law, or whoever. But if you're lost, it's your own fault. 
because Jesus said, All that come to me I will in no wise cast you out. He has made a way for you to escape all of this that's coming. Thank God there's a bridge over troubled waters. Thank God there's a door that will take us to peace and safety. Thank God there's an old ship of Zion that's loading up now headed for the other shore. I've got my ticket and I'm going to ride. Thank God I'm going to escape when all hell's broke loose. Glory to God. Lift your hands and praise God for his power. I worry. I preach so hard. I go seven days and nights a week. And yet I've got many of my people that kind of take things for granted. I've got aunts and uncles. I've got close people that are lost without God that seem to be living with this anticipation. Well, when all of this starts taking place, then I'll run and Brother West or Brother Randy will help me find God. But sometimes that's not so. You see, there were five wise and five foolish virgins. Five of them escaped. Five of them didn't escape. Brother, that's what it's all about. You might be watching this program, and I live in the hills of West Virginia where some coal operators, I can remember seeing some coal operators that used to go around with their, their mining clothes on. I'm glad to know that if I hold on to the nail-scarred hand of Calvary, I'll make it. If I'm in the bed asleep, there'll be two in the bed. One will be taken, one left behind. It'll be the one that's ready to escape. Are you, are you listening? There'll be two in the field. One will be taken, one left behind. Oh, God Almighty, there'll be two on the job in the factory. One will be taken and one left behind. There'll be two in a radio station. One will be taken, one left behind. There'll be two in a television station. One will be taken to left behind. Are you listening? Are you ready to escape? God wants you to escape. God wants you to have peace. God's arms are open to you. If you'll run to him, he'll box the devil's ears for you. He'll put his foot right on the devil for you. And he'll help you to find joy unspeakable and full of glory in your heart. Say man, somebody. Say man, somebody. God wants you to escape. God wants to help you escape. I know a lot of you are used to a little 15-minute sermon. You get home on time, in on time, and out at nine. But that ain't going to get you out of this world either. And it's not the preachers that's scratching your itching ears that's going to help you get out of here either. They ain't going to have the power to get out themselves if they're not awfully careful. Amen, Brother West. I believe it's time, ladies and gentlemen, to preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ. The beast power is coming upon the world. The harlot church is getting stronger and stronger. Praise God, but I'm getting ready to escape. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to leave this world. What about you? Raise your hands and praise God for his power. Slip your hands up and worship Jesus tonight. Listen to me. He said, Noah, build a boat. Build an ark. And when Noah got through building, only eight people escaped. God, have mercy. Are you listening? One place the Bible said there'll be a remnant saved. A re How many knows what a remnant is? You ladies know what a remnant is? How many of you souls? How many of you are, are, are seamsters or so, you sow a whole lot? You know what the remnant is. After you get through making a garment, the remnant's what you got left. I know the world ain't got much use for some of you. They think you're fanatic. They think you're crazy because all you talk about is Jesus. They think, now, man, you got to talk about a little bit other thing besides that. No, I eat Jesus. Glory to God. I, I, I dream about him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm a fanatic. Praise God. They've got baseball fans and football fans. I'm a Jesus fan. I'm a fanatic. Praise God. Because God's made me a way to escape. God's made me a way to escape. Eight people, eight people escaped the flood. Thousands, multitude probably died. God sent Moses down into the land of Egypt. And said, tell the people I'm going to help them to escape. How many knows they had to believe? Had, they had to believe. 
And when they got to the Red Sea, how many knows when you, when you start to escape, many times you're going to find the Red Sea. Sometimes the waters don't want to part, but if you'll stand there and stretch your hand out over the waters and the problems, they'll part. God will make a way to escape. How many knows God honored Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's faith and helped them to escape the furnace of fire? How many knows God honored Daniel's faith and locked the jaws of the lions and helped Daniel to probably sleep on a lion's paw? How many knows that they bound old Simon Peter up? Sixteen soldiers were laying all around him, bound him up in chains, had him tied up and bound up. He couldn't get loose. He couldn't get, he couldn't get away. Are you listening to me? But old Peter went to sleep. Hallelujah. And when he went to sleep, the angel of the Lord come in the jail where they had Peter under arrest and in prison or in jail. He came in and smote old Peter on the side and said, get up. In so many words, you've been here long enough. I'm going to help you escape this place. Say amen, somebody. Praise God. Old Peter didn't even know what was going on. He thought he was having a dream or seeing a vision, but it was real. Hallelujah. That angel said, gird up your loins. Praise God. Put your clothes on. Get your shoes on, Peter. Hallelujah. You're going to get out of here. God was making a way to escape. Now, Peter would never have got out of there if he'd have laid back down on the floor and said, well, that was a pretty good dream while it lasted. No, sir, buddy, he took the escape way. Say amen, somebody. Praise God. He took that angel, no doubt, by the hand, and right out into the streets they went, and the gates opened, and Peter went right out into the streets. Hallelujah. An escaped man, set free by the power of God. Say amen, somebody. How many knows about Paul and Silas sitting in the jail? Hallelujah. The little backs were beat to the bone. They were probably burning like fire. If that been some of us, we'd have been trying to figure out a way to get our name took off the book. How are we going to get out of this mess? But honey, old Paul about midnight said no doubt to Silas. He said probably something like this. Silas did a song. They began to sing praises unto God and the longer they sung, the heart of the jailhouse shook. And honey, God shook that jailhouse apart and the prison doors came open. God said I'll make you a way to escape. All you've got to do is believe buddy and God will help you. God will see you through. Some of you are having hard financial difficulties, but you trust in God. He'll help you to escape. Some of you are sick, but you're trusting God. He'll help you to escape. Some of you are depressed. He will help you to escape if you'll put your trust in Him. Say man, somebody. Give the Lord a hand clap. Give Jesus a great big cheer. Come on and give the Lord applause. You got to take the escape way. You got to do it yourself. You got to take it. When God says you got it, you got to take it. You got to take it. The next time the devil says, You're going to die of that cancer, you say, You're a liar, devil. I can't die. I'm too busy getting healed. The next time the devil says, You ain't got a dime to your name, your pockets are empty. You're not going to be able to pay the bill. Say, you're a liar, devil. My God's going to supply every need I got. Hallelujah. Because God's made me an escape way. You start talking victory, you'll have the victory. You see the door. How many knows we got to see Jesus as the answer to every problem? Brother West, how are you going to pay these $50,000, $60,000 a month in television bills? I don't know. Just go ask him. I'm looking to him. How, how in this world, Brother West, you gonna, how are you going to make it? Just go out. He said, I'm the door. I'm the way. I look to him. He's made me an escape way. And as I'm closing, with all sincerity, from my heart, Don't let God throw you a lifeline and then you tell him you don't need it. You see, when your heart pounds like it's pounding there, sir, sissy, when your heart's pounding like that, that's him calling you. That's him saying, take hold of my hand and I'll see you through. That's him saying, I've thrown you a lifeline. Why don't you take it? Why don't you believe? Why don't you come to me? The only reason that you that are watching this program. The only reason that I can even 
think of that you won't be saved now is that you just simply neglect what I preached in this series. Look, of a surety and of a truth, there was once a man named Jesus Christ who was more than a man. He was God manifest in the flesh. Yes, he went to the garden of Gethsemane and he cried there until his sweat became as great drops of blood. That was just for you. You can throw that away. You can neglect that if you want to. But if you do, that's you and God. That's up to you and him. But he did it just for you. Yes, and perhaps you could have been there. Perchance you had been in the, in the hall of Pilate as the soldiers took the scourge and whipped him and nearly beat him to a pulp. Yes, church member. <laughs> You've been sick for years, and all you've heard is how God don't heal anymore. Healing went out with the apostles. If you can neglect him standing there with his little old back beat to the bone and blood and sweat and flesh falling to the floor around his body, if you can do that, if you ne can neglect that, you'll never get healed. You'll never get well. You'll never know what I've known about the healing power of God. I'll seem, I'll seem like... Uh, I'll seem like a fool to you if you can neglect that. It'll seem silly to you if you can put your, put your back against that and say, I don't believe it. And then go. Go. Go, sir. Go, sissy. Go to the top of Golgotha's hill and hear him drive the nails in his tender little hands. Listen as the soldier drives the nails in his hand and hear him cry. Listen to him as he grits his teeth, his hair matted with blood. Listen to him cry and weep and cry like a baby. His tongue swollen, his lips bursted, his beard pulled out. Listen to him. Watch him. Watch him squirm like a worm on that cross. Watch him struggle and moan and groan and watch him weep and cry. And then if you can neglect that and say, I don't love you for doing that for me, I don't want you, then you deserve to go to hell. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? And if you can go and stand beside of Mary as tears roll down her cheeks revealing a broken heart for her little boy Jesus meant a whole lot to her and look at Mary and say what are you crying for he wasn't no good and neglect him then you'll possibly never be saved and perhaps you could go stand beside of another Mary that went to the tomb of Jesus when he was supposed to be laying there wrapped in grave clothes, dead, cold, and stiff. But when she got there, the stone was rolled away. And she looked in and began to weep and cry. And at a distance, she turned and tears rolling down her cheeks, her face all messed up from crying and she looked and she thought she saw the gardener she supposed him to be the gardener she said sir if you've taken him away if you'll tell me where you have taken him I'll go get him that's what you ought to say your peace is in Jesus go find him he's waiting on you and if you can go there and hear him as he said woman why weepest thou? Woman, whom seekest thou? She said, I'm seeking Jesus of Nazareth. They've taken his body away. Please tell me where it is. And Jesus looked at her and spoke her name, Mary. She ran to him with all enthusiasm and joy and said, Rabboni, I'm master. Jesus said, don't touch me. Go tell my disciples 
to go into Galilee. I'm going before him into Galilee, and I'll see him there. If you can pass that up and say there's no such thing as a resurrection, then you'll never be part of that first resurrection. If you can neglect that part and say God's not going to do it, Jesus will never come back, he's dead, he's gone, then you'll probably never be saved. But if you're lost without God and you're tired of being a drunk and you're tired of being a drug addict, you're tired of being a prostitute, you're tired of just being lonesome, you're just, you're just fed up with not having joy, you're tired of not having peace, you're tired of not having joy, you're tired of not having happiness, you're tired of not being able to face the world with a smile, then it's time for you to give Jesus a chance in your life. If you'll do that. He'll help you escape. Give him a cheer. And as you're clapping, bow your heads. I'd like for you to bow your heads all over this building. In the name of Jesus. It's a simple thing, so simple, that if a man were a wayfaring man, he could be saved. All it takes to be saved is to say, Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Help me to live right. Wash me in the blood. Set me free by your power. If you can do that, God will save you. God will set you free. God will give you joy. God's made a way to escape. You can escape out of all of your troubles. Your escape way is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. Looking up on the wall, watching the way rolling. Inside of me, having no way to set it free. Somebody, please help me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's been such a long time of coming, oh, but I found the Lord and the peace within. Have you found that peace? Slip your hands up to God and worship Him. Slip your hands up to Him. Standing on the high. Watching the people down life's road they go. Lord, they've got so many worries. As I am sure you already know. Hallelujah. Somebody please help them find the escape way. Hallelujah. Out of the state, they find themselves in. It's been such a long Come in, but I found the Lord 
and the peace within. How many has found that peace tonight? Raise your hands and thank God for it, everybody. Look at the sand and long the picture. Thank you, Master. Of a man whose life has been so abused. How I many knows the devil has abused our teenagers and a lot of our older folks? He searched for so many tomorrow. Thank you, Master. That's why his life has been so Somebody please help me find the way. Lift your hands to God. Out of the state, he finds himself It's been If you found that peace, you ought to be praising God for it, everybody, everybody. Somebody please run to the highways and the hedges and tell them that there's an escape way to go. Lift your hand. of God, peace within. Thank God. Thank God. But I found the Lord and the peace within. Slip your hand up and sing that with me. Would you do it, everybody? Thank you, Jesus. But I found the Lord and the peace within. Sing it with me, everybody. Say it with me. Sing it with me. But I found the Lord and the peace within. Give the Lord a great big hand. Would you do it? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many believes that God's made us an escape way? How many is glad that you found it? I could have been, I could have been in a honky talk tonight or a nightclub, but I'm not. I could have been lost. I could have been in hell tonight, but I'm not. Thank God. I could have been six foot under the ground in my grave, but I'm not. Thank God I found joy. I found peace. I found it in Jesus. What about you? Go ahead and clap for me. It's fine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a good God, isn't he? God's a wonderful God. I want, I'll tell you what, one day I want to preach, one, sometime I want to preach on television. We need to love Jesus and take him for just what he is.